Hey everybody, this is going to be a really quick video to show you how you can add Bluetooth to an antique radio. Now I'm going to start off by saying, if you're not familiar with antique radios, do not attempt what I'm going to show you. Working on these radios can be dangerous, and there's a lot of lethal voltage flying around these things that can hurt you. So if you don't know what you're doing, do not attempt this. Okay? Uh, and as our friend John from Arkansas says, electricity is like a caged animal, just looking to get out. So, if you don't know what you're doing, please do not proceed. So with that said, why would you want to add Bluetooth to a radio? Well, you know, you can uh, extend the usability of it. If you have a, a really nice radio that has a, has a really great sound, and you're picking up AM stations, um, you may want to be able to get other things. I know there's been lots of videos about AM transmitters that you can connect to YouTube and do it that way. This is a really simple way that you can play music from just about any modern device, like your iPhone or your iPad or your Android device, and you can have it play through your radio, which would sound really, really nice, and you could you know, use it for anything you wanted. I'm also going to say that there are many ways to do this, and there's many opinions about this. Some will not be happy at all that you have to modify the radio one single bit to do this. Some will say that um, there's, there's a different way which I'll cover to do it. And, um, you know, this is a personal preference, right? We restore these radios, we take great care and time with these things, and we want to make them usable, and we want to do so in a way that is reversible. Um, and that's, that's how that goes. So this is how I do it, um, and uh, hopefully this helps you. So where do you start? Well, you've got, your, you've got your radio, and think about what you want to do here. In your radio on your schematic, it's basically split in half. This side is your RF and your IF section. And then you get over here to the output side, which is basically an audio amplifier, right? It's just like your stereo. Now, this particular radio is a single-ended, so there's only, there's only one output tube. There's no dual tubes here. However, we just want to use the amplifier section. So how do you do that? You have to basically cut off the rest of the radio. And it's really simple to do. And in order to do that, it's there's one point where you have to go, and it's on the volume control. Now, this schematic is for my Stromberg Carlson 58L. And this is the volume control right here. It's R17. Here's the wiper, and there's the control. And the way that you do it is really simple. You have to get a Bluetooth board like this. I got this on Amazon for $15. It's basically a really nice, small, compact board. It has a relay in it right there has a power connection for a 9 volt and you definitely want to use a wool wart with this don't connect it to the radio to the wiring of the radio and then you have a, a 3 millimeter um, out, output jack that will go to the um, go to the radio itself in the back of the radio you're going to want you're going to want to put two things you're going to want to put a switch a single pole double throw switch and you're going to want to put one of these little jacks right here this is a 3 millimeter jack just like so. Okay? So, back to our schematic. Here's our volume control. So what do we do? I'll show you. So basically, what we're doing is we are severing this line right here. This is a point in this radio. Here's the volume control. Just for reference, let me draw it right here. There's the volume control. Right there. Okay, you can see it. And what you want to do is you want to take a look at the capacitor that's connected to one end of the uh, volume control. Now on some radios it's going to be a 0.1, on this radio it's a 0.02, but essentially this is the connection that connects it to the radio, right, to this side of the radio. So what you want to do is you want to break that connection, and you're going to connect one side of it to the, to the common part of the switch. The single pole double throw, right? Single pole double throw switch looks like this, right? And this goes like this and like this. You want to connect the end of that capacitor to the common part of the switch, okay? This side of the switch, you connect back on the other point that you disconnected. So you'll see here, I came off the capacitor, came around, right here to the common part of the switch 
and when I look at the switch connection here, the other side comes around, comes here, and completes the connection. That means it's going to be in radio mode. When you flip the switch in the other direction, you're going to be in Bluetooth mode. And what that does is it cuts off the, um, the IF, the RF, RF and IF section and basically leaves you with just an audio amplifier. It's that simple. Okay? You want to use shielded wire. So you're going to run a wire from the volume control, in many cases, to the back of the radio. And you're going to want to install the switch and the jack and you want to use shielded wire for that, okay? If you use shielded wire, of course, obviously, only one side of it, not both, one side of it, you attach the shield to ground, okay? And that's going to be, um, that's going to help you with your noise cancellation. Also, when you use a jack like this, it grounds to the chassis. Now, there may be some differences in your radio where you don't have a grounded chassis. You may have a floating um, B minus or a floating ground and you have to pay special attention to that and like I said if you don't know what you're doing don't do it these radios are dangerous they can kill you if you don't know what you're doing so do not attempt it unless you know what you're doing so to close this video out I'm going to show you my radio how I did it my radio is a little bit unique I didn't have to go to the volume pot for this and I'll explain why in a moment so let me put the radio on the bench and I'll show you all right, here's my radio. Here's the volume control right here. Now you'll notice this volume control, see this big snake here, this big wire? Well, that's basically a piece of shielded wire. So I already have a piece of shielded wire that runs to the back of the radio. How easy is that? And it turns out that that 0.02 cap that I showed you coming off the volume control is right here. So all I had to do was lift up one end of that pot, of that capacitor, and connect it to the switch just like I showed you. The other side of it goes here. This white wire, is that's where this capacitor was originally connected. Here's another piece of shielded wire that I attached right here, right? Comes up here and goes to my switch, my single pole double throw switch. It's right here. And then underneath that I have the jack, and I'll show you what that looks like here. There we go. There's the jack, there's the switch. So one position is radio, next position is Bluetooth. That simple. Okay, so I really didn't have to run much at all here. I already had this piece of shielded wire. So I'm really, really lucky. I only had to use like a two inch piece of wire here to do this. Some radios you're going to have to go all the way from front to back. That's okay. Just do it right. Make sure it's shielded. Okay, so that's how you do this. I want to make sure I shared that with you in case you're looking to add Bluetooth to your radio. I'm going to just close by repeating myself just one more time. If you don't know what you're doing and you're not qualified to do this, don't do it. You could really hurt yourself. There's capacitors in here that re retain charges, and you don't want to be messing around in this thing if you don't know what you're doing. All right, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments, and I hope, uh, I hope you enjoy it. By the way, um, some folks would do this a little bit differently. They'll also, in, in, when they, on the switch here, they'll kill the filament to the tubes that do all the um, RF and IF stuff so that they save the filament, that's overkill. That's too much modification of the radio in my liking. I don't want to modify the radio that much. I just want to make it really simple and reversible. If I want to take this out, all I got to do is put this cap back over here and take these switches out, and I'm good. I don't want to modify the radio like that. So um, this will work just great. All right? All right, folks. If you have any questions, let me know. Thanks.